Hello everybody and welcome to the Homestead Facebook page and YouTube channel. Today we're going to be harvesting a little bit of honey. So, the last time I was in here, I took a single frame that you can see on the side of the hive here from the bees and uh, they were not happy. Um, it was it was a cold day, uh, coldest day so far this fall. It was around um, one degree. So really not a great time to be in the hive, but um, that was the time I had, so that was the time I used. Anyways, they've cleaned this up and uh, I'm probably gonna drop it back in the hive here today. You can see that there's quite a lot congregating in front of the hive already. So it's warm, it's much warmer today. They're out and they're busy. Top cover off. My hive tool here. Yeah, I don't want to get stung as many times as I did last week. Anyways, here we are. So the first thing I want to do is assess how much honey they have to ensure their survival over the winter. I don't want to take too much. In fact, I planned on not taking any at all this year, but they just did so well that uh, I feel like I can take a little bit and that I'm not gonna hurt them. So, there we go, thing number one. I'm just trying to clear away the dead bees from last time. I'm gonna give them a little smoke here, they don't the first That's fake. thing number two time for thicker gloves <laughs> I brought these gloves because last time they were so irritable so I guess that was a good call. I don't know if maybe it's just a fall thing in general due to the fact that there is um, there's not really much for them to go out and graze on. So maybe they're just a little more protective. Anyways, okay, I'm suited up, I'm tucked in, I'm ready to go. So, where was I? I was saying that I want to assess how much is really in the hive here to uh, ensure that they're going to have enough, that they're not going to starve over the winter. And I would prefer not to have to get into uh, using sugar water and stuff like that in the spring as well messy uh, it actually winds up killing a lot of them I found out this spring so if I could leave the right amount in there for them to do well on their own then bonus um, yeah see they're all over me trying to stink anyway uh, so last night I did some research and uh, the most I could come up with was uh, somewhere around 80 pounds average frame weighs anywhere from 8 to 10 pounds per frame so they are angry. So uh, I want to make sure that I have at least eight full frames in there. I was hoping that I could get maybe two out of here today. So we'll take a little look and see what we can get into. Last time I checked, a month ago, uh, both these top two frames were really full. So I'm just going to take a quick peek at the second frame here. And if it's still full, then
then I'm going to go ahead and extract a couple frames from the top here. Okay. Angry, angry, angry. Oh my goodness, angry. Okay, I'm just gonna log in. One, two, three, four. Full. Second hive is full. Unbelievable. They are all over me, sting me left, right, and center. Maybe a little more smoke. Put a little smoke on me. There you go. Ah, that helped a little. Okay, so that's, this box is full. This box is mostly full. Pretty glad that their stingers aren't long enough to get through this sweater. outer frame never has anything on it. This frame is loaded down on one side and that's good. So I'm going to go into the middle here. I'm going to take two of these. One. So that leaves them with eight frames along the bottom that are completely filled and one, two, three, four, four frames along the top here, three of them completely filled, two of them one half filled, so that's 12 frames, eight frames, plus, plus, uh, yeah, 12, so eight pounds on the lower end uh, is going to be 96 pounds and on the upper end could be 120 so that should definitely see them through the winter so I'm just gonna close this up now putting my empty frame back in from last time Inner cover. I thought my girls loved me more than this. They are not happy. My top cover. 
And that's it. Bring these over here and give you a, a quick look. Not sure how well the camera's going to zoom in, and with the thicker gloves, I can't really touch to, to focus. So there you go, both sides. Uh, last time, I got about a liter from a frame. So two frames, I'm hoping for two liters here. Okay, so now we're inside and away from the raging swarm. Uh, the second part here, uh, the way I'm doing it, I don't have a big centrifuge and I actually wonder if I'll ever bother purchasing one. Um, I can knock out one frame at a time using my method and uh, it's pretty quick. So yeah, I'm not sure, just maybe um, two to three hours and the honey is as clear and pure as it's gonna be. So basically what I do here is uh, I have the, the honeycomb, right, or the frame with all the honey in it. And then I bought this cheap $10 screen here at uh, Canadian Tire and it does a really good job of the first strain. So you can see that the holes are rather large, but that that's going to capture uh, most of the capping and the actual honeycomb itself. Uh, so it drains down into the bowl and um, I'll just go through the process of what I do here and we'll continue on from there after. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit messy. So generally there's a couple ways I've seen online where people will extract. Uh, there's plug-in hot knives that you can take and you can scrape down and allow the honey to drain out. And then there's <clears throat> rollers with spikes, a tool so that you can roll along here and it'll puncture into each individual comb and that will allow it to drain down as well. Um, you can use both of those and then you can get, you know, four, six and eight frame, four, six and eight frame um, centrifuges which you spin and, um, you know, that has all the honey come out to the side of the centrifuge and then it drains down to the bottom and then you set up your filtration system. So basically I just took the, the easiest method that uh, I could come up with and, and the cheapest method. I mean, it cost me maybe like $20, $25. So anyways, um, what I did last time was I took uh, a paring knife and I just kind of ran it down through the comb to loosen it up and separate it. And you can see that it's starting to, to run down, but um, I'm just doing this so that it, it comes off easier for me. Uh, you don't have to do this. And again, this is just, you know, this is my first year. This is what I'm doing. Uh, I don't expect anybody to go out tomorrow and buy all the stuff that I'm using and copy this method or anything like that. In fact, um, you know, I'm looking for any suggestions that people have. And uh, when you watch this video, generally people, when they see somebody do something, they come up with a, a better method. So really, this is just an informative video to kind of show you the process that I go through. But anyway, so now that I've cut it all and it's, it's a little looser, then I just go ahead and scrape it off as best I can. And I save all the wax, so I take everything off of the frame. And when I'm done, and I've scraped this down as well as I can, then I'm going to bring this frame back to the, to the hive. And um, last time they were, they were so angry and aggressive that uh, I actually left the frame outside, which is a bit of a no-no. You're going to attract uh, unwanted guests to your hive and you could go out there and, and your whole hive could be knocked over and gone if there's bears in your area. Uh, in most areas there's going to be skunks so the, the honey being outside the box is a bad idea even if it's just trace amounts on the frame. But um, there we go. You know when I if I go and put this back in the frame then they're going to clean it up and they're going to put it uh, 
into into frames with honeycomb already drawn out on it and uh, cap it and they'll use this over the winter too so none of it goes to waste but basically there we go that's one side flip it over or keep it off the wall or the wife will be upset so I'll just go through quickly do the same thing actually you know what this time I'll just try it with the spoon we'll see how it goes it's the wax is soft so I imagine it'll come off yeah I mean it's no different so maybe like marginally more resistance very little Funny too how, you know, there's some spots where the honey is a certain color and then other spots where it's darker, right? Like it's lighter and darker in different spots. Um, I can only imagine that that has to do with the, the flowers that they were getting the nectar from at the time, what was ready and what wasn't. Again, this is all just a learning process, right? I mean, this is our first year. Uh, we're learning what we can and um, really kind of doing what, what you're doing right now, watching other people's videos, reading blogs, uh, just trying to gather as much information that we can to make our own informed decisions. There's, there's really no, from what I've gathered, there's really no right or wrong way to go about doing this. I mean, the way I'm doing this may be a little more time consuming than um, some other people's methods, but again, we're just a single hive right now, um, learning the trade, really. So there's going to be trial and error, there's experimentation, and, and that's just life, right? Um, next year, the hive did so well that I'm hoping to be able to split that hive into three, maybe even four hives, uh, purchase a couple queens, um, just just for for next year to see. You know, hopefully they they can grow. I I've, I've no reason to doubt that that um, the hive will. It's good. The hive will do really well. The hives will do really well next year. But I'll just purchase queens next year and then. Uh, you know, try to try to grow our our little apiary here. So that's it. That's this one. Turn it upside down here. I'm just gonna pause you for a second. Okay, so here focus in here we go so that's the scrapings um, that's you know the the strainer and there you go kind of a low light shot here but you can see the honey is flowing it's going through um, this is a very easy method for me uh, like I said it takes a couple of hours not days so that's really great uh, yeah, I can only process one or two frames at a time, but really it's it's a couple of hours instead of, you know, talking days and, and potentially weeks. I uh, probably shouldn't have let that uh, spoon sit in there, but I'll get that out after. So that's one frame, probably work out to be about a liter. And then uh, you can see all the wax is already, you know, coming to the surface as the honey drains through and, and uh, we're going to save all that. Um, I'll just show you the next step instead of extending this video any longer. So this is a second bowl that I use. Here's uh, another strainer with uh, some cheesecloth in it. So after it's completely drained into this bowl, I'll give it an hour, hour and a half. Um, I put it on the mantle above the, the stove last time when we had a fire and it seemed to just flow through really quickly. Um, so then I'll take this bowl and I'll pour it into here and then this cheesecloth is double layered and it has a screen underneath uh, say this screen right here um, eight bucks at, at Canadian Tire and then uh, you can see that it's really low in the bowl so it would stop straining so I just put uh, the handle 
and the other end has a little handle on it as well and I prop it up and uh, it flows through there really quickly after it's gone through its first strain and there's just minor impurities left. So that's really it. Um, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, if you found something useful, you could like and share it for me. I'd appreciate that. And um, any subscriptions are always appreciated as well. Thanks for watching, folks. Have a great day. And uh, if, you're, if you're into the beekeeping already, uh, good luck with your honey harvest.